Hello and good afternoon. We are Placebo, and today we'll be answering some of the questions that you, the fans, have sent us. Um, and starting with the first one from Lenny Closer. This one is for you, Brian. It says, Brian, the master of words, have you ever thought about writing a book? Um, I think, well, no, not really, to be honest. Um, I find it quite difficult anyway to sort of come up with lyrics for for songs. I sort of see, it, it's quite easy to kind of, um, for the three of us to be in a room, and then, because musically the melodies come really, really quickly. But once that's done, then I'm just kind of left with, with a, a, a sort of a state of panic, kind of going like, well, what the hell do I have to say to the world, really? Mm. Um, and uh, so I guess, I guess the answer to that question is no. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, Lenny. Um, next one is from Sophie Pannier. And, uh, and here's a song for all of us. Is there a song that we love but have never played live? What do you guys think? Uh, yes, there is a song, uh, actually on our new album, Loud Like Love. Uh, it's, a, it's the last track. It's called Bosco. And it's a track that uh, was written at the, uh, the beginning of the whole album session. And it's one of, of beauty. I can say to myself, and uh, it's one that is, it's requires an orchestra in order to, to perform it live to do the song justice. So I think uh, we have to choose a special location for that and really get well rehearsed up and, and get the uh, get the orchestra in for that one. Agreed. Yeah, it is. It is. It's the song on the album with the. Are there any guitars in it at all? Can't can't think right now. It's mostly strings and piano, isn't mm. it? The next one is from Paige Burton, and it says she asks, "What inspired us to become musicians?" Brian. Uh, well, basically, I think. Well, personally, I don't know if this is right, correct for you, but I was just so terrified at the idea of having to work in an office. Um, even as a teenager, the idea really depressed me. So I tried to find a solution to that by. Um, really focusing on, on uh, <clears throat> developing um, my skills in, at the time, drama, which then, after I went to university to do that, became music. So it was basically absolute terror at the idea of getting a job, a real job, a normal job, a job in, the op in an office. Yeah, agreed, yeah. same. I mean, I come from such a small country town, it was like everybody there just ended up doing kind of the same thing, working on dairies or being truck drivers and stuff, and I just like wanted to get out of that, wanted to be one of the, one of the only people that I've actually got out of the small town that I was from. Same thing, motivations. Do something different. What about you? Yeah, I, I, when I first started to play, I started to play the drums, yeah. and I, I felt that that came came quite natural to, to me and I moved on to other instruments and it just felt like uh, like an extension of me. I felt that it was something that I could go to um, you know, as a, as a friend and also a place where I could uh, just be creative. And um, I just kind of followed that blindly. I finished high school and I just went to study music. I studied guitar and I also studied sound production and I never really thought that I could do anything else because nothing else really interested me, and and luckily, um, I met bump, well bumped into Brian and we uh, we started a band and I had to kind of go to my uh, teacher say you know bye I'm going on tour now <laughs> and that's kind of been it since. Uh, next question is from No Sim and No Ask. This one's for Brian. It's for you, Brian. And it says, Brian, what does that blue sticker on your Gibson SG stand for? What does it stand for? Uh, that, that blue sticker is a promotional sticker for the band Uncle from the album Science Fiction. It's one of my favorite albums. Nice. There you go. Never knew that. There you go. 
Uh, next question comes from Gabriel Toreto Tobon. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If I did not, please do not come shoot me. If you could choose any artist to co-write a song with, who would that be? Uh, I personally go with Tom Waits. Just to sit down and do anything with him would be great. What about you guys? Polly Harvey. Good choice. Maybe to uh, do an instrumental with Nils Fromm. No, who's, Berlin, no, who's that? Berlin bass piano player does beautiful, sparse piano music. Nice one. Mm -hmm. Nice, just juxtaposition with some of the stuff that we do. <laughs> Next question comes from Ulri Pradnik, and the question is, can you please describe what happened in the last dreams that you had while sleeping? Oh, God, I, my dreams are very, very vivid and um, quite sort of science fiction-y. Um, and I'm, I'm often in some, in, a, in like a state of jeopardy, or I think they're anxiety dreams, I'm sort of like, um, often it's like a futuristic civilization or something, and I'm being forced to sort of engage in some kind of competition to, in order to sort of like save my life or something. Um, I used to have, I used to have flying dreams a lot. And that, but that stopped in my early 20s. Um, and I also used to have uh, dreams that I was falling from a really, really big height. So I think all, all basically all <laughs> the dreams that I remember are just massive anxiety dreams. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Usually, the, yeah, usually I sort of have to face <clears throat> the, the, sort of the fear of death. And, in my dreams, or the death of somebody that I care about. You died in a dream once that I was in. Um, Lucky that I had. Thankfully, yeah. some for dreams me. don't come true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it's been uh, uh, dreams of, of being displaced because we're in the States now and we've flown in from, from Europe and I've still got jet lag. Mm. And the dreams that I have, I'm, I'm kind of watching myself. And I can press play and then rewind. So it's almost like I'm suspended mm. in a, in the time and space, which is not home and not something that I can sort of that doesn't it's not real. It's not sort of grounded. And I think that's got to do with, with the jet lag. I used to have very strange jet lag dreams. The last one I had was I was suffocating a family member in my duvet. It's pretty disturbing. Jesus. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, they, they tend to be the more disturbing ones that I can stick with you, unfortunately. Yeah, those are the ones that you can't chance to shake. I have those all the time. My, my, last night, I think I had some Breaking Bad related dreams because I've been watching way too much of that, and that's a terrible place to be in. The next question comes from Ryan Justin. And Ryan asks, how do you choose your singles? They kind of are, are self-evident, mm -hmm. really. It just, it, it's, it's more of a feeling, but um, almost as if they kind of choose themselves. But there, there seems to be, in, in my mind, a sort of a quality that you can imagine them being played on the radio in a car. Mm -hmm. you can, if that sort of comes across, then it's kind of single material for me. Next question comes from Annika Groger. And Annika asks, what are our plans for the future? Do, uh, do we want to tour as long as the Rolling Stones have? And do we want to act like the Rolling Stones? What? Behave like the Rolling Stones? Yes. Uh, to know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, let's, I suppose let's, let's, we'll answer the first bit of it for you. So what, what are our plans for the future? What are your plans for the future? I really, really don't know if I have any other skills. Mm. So just try and... And continue as we are. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We've sort of been doing it for too long that we've. I'm not too sure if, kind of, if I'm good at anything else, really. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's going to be great at something. Isn't well, yeah, it? yeah, one thing. At least you're know. great at one thing. Yeah, that's good. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm trying to live as as much in the now as possible, you know. So if I think too far ahead in the future, I start to get anxious. So right now, I think the main focus is to take this album and give it the transformation to to the live stage and, and make the live show the best possible and the most satisfying for everyone involved. Next question comes from Doan Juan, and Doan asks, "When will we announce the North American tour dates?" Huh. Well, we, we, I guess we're not sure exactly when we're going to announce the dates themselves, but mm. there are, we are in the process of planning. Um, it's coming back in 2014. Definitely, absolutely. And Steve's very excited about it. I am, I'm very excited it's about the tour in the United States. I don't think I've ever Super seen you this excited. excited. I am just <laughs> beyond myself. The next question comes from Bradley Zibbert. And Bradley asks, well, he says, I love the new album. What artists or albums are you all really into right now? What are you guys listening to at the moment? I'm really into the um, to the new album by The National called Trouble Will Find Me. It's very rare for me to sort of find a, uh, an album that has guitars on it that I, I listen to obsessively. <clears throat> um, but the, yeah, the latest National album is, is pretty amazing. Yeah, it was a good yeah. recommendation. Great record, that. I really like the new Golf Rap album. Yeah, well. that's that's the one I'm really getting into. Oh, yeah. I haven't Feels checked it out yet. Yeah. Something to put your ears to, huh? Yeah. Yeah, just beautiful, um, gentle. Very different to nocturnal, kind of more upbeat stuff. Yeah. She was just in the studio with us the other day, wasn't she? In yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, actually, all the um, cases everywhere. I didn't see them, but. The guitarist that was uh, touring with Placebo on the uh, on the men's tour, Alex Lee. Is Alex Lee playing with Goldfarb? Yeah, with, uh, with Alex and Goldfarb, yeah. Ah. Me, personally, I I'm really into the new Arctic Monkeys record. I think that this one is a great rock record for them. You know, I'll be chuffed to bits to write a lot of songs on that, and that's pretty exciting for me. Next question comes from Chloe Moko. And Chloe asks, if we weren't musicians, what do you think we'd be doing? What would you be doing if you guys if we didn't do what we do, you reckon? <laughs> I'd probably be a tattoo so artist of some sort. You know? Burned so many bridges along the way, I don't know if it'd be possible to build any <laughs> new ones. <laughs> well, let's just put it then, music, baby. What? Is there anything else? No, I think not. Next question comes from Michael Black, and Michael asks, uh, any plans for an eighth album? What? Uh, yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Definitely. You plan to make an eighth album? Yes. Let's concentrate on the seventh one for now. Uh, next question. Oh, now, actually, that is it. That is the end of the question. So thank you for sending these in, and we do hope that we, uh, we answered them um, to your liking and uh, hopefully we will see you at our show tomorrow night and uh, next time we come to America in 2014.